So we're learning many points of pride about New Jersey and its rich contribution to the culture, progress of the United States. It's important for us. It's important to have a sense of pride in the state that we are. We are too often, I think, the punchline in bad jokes. Uh, perhaps Rodney Dangerfield ought to be uh, our, our patron saint, because like he, we get no respect. But we ought to get respect. But more importantly, as we learned this morning, understanding that history and taking us out of the immediate context of the period dress and style and understanding the broader set of problems that are being addressed can help us understand how to chart a course to the future that is a path to the prosperity for the next century that we've enjoyed for the last. And if there's any area, I think, where we need to understand, it's our history as an industrial state. There's a bridge across the Delaware, not far from the Washington crossing that you saw in this morning's talk. It proclaims Trenton makes and the world takes. Imagine how profound that is. Few people understand all of the different industrial segments that were, if not born, grown and matured here in New Jersey. We all know about Thomas Edison, electric light bulb, power generation, power distribution, consumer electronics, movies. But the presence, that powerful engine, 250,000 employees in West Orange at one point, bred a local supply chain, shops and specialty people supplying that, that served as an attractor. So the telephone wasn't invented here, but I think everyone would agree that Ma Bell grew into maturity and it became a global power right here in New Jersey. So as Alexander Graham Bell looked to move from Connecticut where they set the business up in New York, but they made their business here and brought Western Electric in from Chicago and that combination of the intellect at Bell Laboratories and the muscle of manufacturing in Western Electric became legendary. Radio, we didn't invent radio here, but after World War I, the US Army took the patents that it had acquired and turned them over to the commercial sector. Radio Corporation of America emerged out of, guess what? General Electric, a descendant of Thomas Edison's work, and that became the basis of modern telecommunications by, broad, by, uh, by broadcast. First broadcast, commercial broadcast radio, television, color television, all invented right here in New Jersey. God, any one of those would be enough for most states. Huh? But we didn't stop there. Down on the bottom, there's a picture of one of the Rockefeller brothers. In the 1880s, Standard Oil, already a conglomerate, but primarily producing oil for lubricating pumps and a replacement for whale oil and lamps, came to New Jersey because we had favorable tax laws. Imagine that, here in New Jersey. <laughs> And when they were ultimately divested and broken into pieces, one of the survivors was the New Jersey branch, Standard Oil of New Jersey, that continued to produce under the trade name that we, some of us still remember, SO. SO is SO for Standard Oil of New Jersey, which became Exxon. And in time grew to reacquire Standard Oil Company of New York, Sacconi Mobile. So if you will, Exxon Mobile is the vestiges of the breakup of Standard Oil come back together again, rooted right here. There's a picture of the refinery that still operates in Linden. It's not an Exxon refinery now, but it's been a continuous operation since the early 1900s. And what a surprise then that with that production sector for petrochemicals, that when George Merck was looking for a place to plant the family business as he came from Germany in pharmaceuticals, he would buy a tract of land right next to that refinery. And there you have then the roots of the modern pharmaceutical industry right here in New Jersey. But that, we didn't stop there. George Bakelin invented the first commercial plastics just up the river, up the Hudson River. But when he wanted to produce, where did he go? He went to Perth Amboy. And the Bakelite company then became ultimately Union Carbide, which persisted as one of the global leaders in plastics production until its acquisition by Dow and still sits and produces here in New Jersey. And that process industry competency that we've threaded together there also became part of the heritage of people and machinery and technologies that fed the growth of the modern food processing industry, and we all know about Campbell's. Wow, geez, that's an awful lot. That's a pretty good Cliff, cliff Notes version of the history of New Jersey industry, but we forgot an important sector, medical devices. Johnson & Johnson persisted since uh, the Civil War era, primarily the provider of uh, surgical gauze, uh, first aid kits, as, as modern medicine was beginning to emerge and understand the importance of sanitary conditions, but it really became launched when one of their engineers figured that if you took some of that sticky goo from the refineries, this, this, uh, this sticky elastomer stuff, and put it on a tape in little pieces, it was really good because uh, Mr. Dickinson was a little clumsy in the kitchen, it turns out, and he found that this thing called the Band-Aid was an important revolution. And so there you see the power 
of combination. We talked this morning about the idea of getting people cheek to jowl and mingling and crossing over ideas. Here you have a huge industrial complex in which there was all of this borrowing and trading back and forth of ideas, of competencies, and local supply chains that didn't end up as name brands, but still persist here in New Jersey as we are in fact still a producer state as much as we may fail to remember that. So how does that inform us about where we might go in the future? Everyone, the whole country is trying to struggle to figure out since the 80s, how did we lose all that stuff that we had? We could have had it all, as the song says. And we all think that the answer is Silicon Valley. Because in our lifetime, that is the, that is the model, right? That, that is, in a sense, a replica of all those scientists, inventors, who then begat these companies that persisted for a century at the top of the game. And we think that that is the only way, is that we have to have some disruptive technology that we can find and nurture and grow, and we look to our universities to be the smart guys that produce that. But universities, for the most part, are producing science. They're producing understanding what is, not necessarily inventiveness and in things that are going to chart our future. Well, a, a great study was done by Richard Lester's group at MIT that said, let's look at what's going on in the world around us, not just the United States, because regional economies are certainly where it's at. Michael Porter brought that lexicon back to the United States uh, in, in the early and mid-1990s and still persists. We understand the importance, even in this virtualized world, of uh, having people interchange, meet, and exchange ideas. And as he looked around, he said, well, yeah, the Silicon, model is, Silicon Valley model certainly is one, the creation of a new industry. But there are others that have gone throughout the world, and we ought to understand that because we don't all need to be the next valley. One is to simply do it the Joyzy way. We'll make them an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> make yourself attractive to an existing industry and become the right home. Taipei is one example his students found in which you could bring in an industry, the electronics industry, and grow it by creating the right uh, business climate and the right feed of supply chains and workers. You can take an existing industry and diversify it, modernize it. Akron lost the uh, consumer tire business, but was able to transform itself to the modern elastomers visit. Or you can simply take an existing company and teach it some new tricks, embellish and add to in the age of IT uh, and sensor technologies in many ways that we can do that as we move forward. What's common amongst all of these is that there's an element of production. Making things matters. Understanding how to do things is important as having a great idea to solve a problem. And that was a core competency in New Jersey. The United States lost its passion and understanding of how important that was. But I think in the last uh, period of this recession, we've seen that that's what's leading us back in terms of the leader in this economy in the country. And certainly, we need to reinstantiate that here in the state. So how do we do that? All right? The manufacturing is in some ways different than it was. It's not assembly line labor. It's not labor driven. It's highly automated. It's highly intelligent, high skilled workforce. Well, what do we have here? That's what we have here in New Jersey. You heard it this morning, and I can echo that. So there's some ideas that are being bandied about by the existing uh, community here to talk about things very specific to this region, to Monmouth, with its deep competency in electronics and communications. One is off the grid storage. What a great idea to turn Sandy on its head and turn it into an advantage as everything becomes wired and interconnected, as everyone is carrying a little computer on their hip, but really behind that is a huge data store. Where are we going to put it all? Well, not only where we're going to put it, we're going to put it so it's always available no matter where we are and no matter what Mother Nature might be bringing to rot. So it's not just the creation of a server farm, but the creation of renewable energy sources and distributed energy generation and management that could be pioneered here. So there's a whole production side of that as well. Another area that seemed like, uh, like really like science fiction only a few years ago, we're now seeing that Nissan's announced it's going to bring self-driven cars or automated pilot-driven cars by the year 2020. Well, we have competencies here in the universities. Princeton, NGIT, my university, have both brought uh, autopiloted vehicles into national DARPA competitions. It is, in fact, a core competency that existed here in the base. The whole idea of uh, Blue Force Tracker and other things that deal with the combination of GPS and distributed intelligence systems, as well as robotics and controls. Where better to prove that out than right here? We, got, we, have, we have the densest population in the United States right here in northern New Jersey. We have real world exposure for uh, our highways and our byways. But even in the context of the base, you could have a tremendous opportunity to put your things through a test track in a variety of environments. So those are just a couple ideas. The real important message is the smart is going to come from the community. It's going to come from the collective intelligence and presence of the people who live and work here 
who understand that there are ways that they can plug and play themselves together and chart a new future. So when the world thinks of us and they think of New Jersey, of course they think about the Jersey Shore. And, and Mother Nature's havoc is only a small piece of that, but we want them to think that there's a whole lot more. There's competency, there's intelligence, there's a great workforce, there's transportation assets, there's all the things, all the ingredients that we need. We just gotta get ourselves together and do it, and I know that we can. Thank you all.